Okay, let me uh, briefly consider another couple of arguments um, in the style of the new atheism of uh, Harris and Hitchens, Dawkins, etc. Um, and criticize them a bit. Um, though, again, I am an atheist. First of all, would be a burden of proof style arguments. So, uh, one might say that a um, positive claim, such as that God exists, you know, much less the content of any particular religion, uh, uh, carries with it a burden of proof, whereas the default position ought to be the negative claim, uh, that is, that God does not exist. Um, <clears throat> now, I think that the, the question of burden of proof is, is very obscure in this case. I mean, I would and have made burden of proof style arguments in certain cases, but I think that a separate argument is required that the burden of proof lies one way or the other. Um, for example, I've argued in favor of anarchism that the burden of proof lies with the statist on the grounds that the state entails coercion and that coercion requires a moral justification. But there's an independent argument that coercion does require a moral justification. Um, of course, what is a uh, positive claim and what is a, uh, a merely a, uh, a, a negative claim or denial or an absence of any claim uh, is, first of all, it's, it's conventional. So, for example, of course, we could represent theism as the view that it's not the case that uh, it's not the case that God exists. That is, make it into a negative claim. Um, in which case, you know, the claim that God does not exist would be the positive claim that is negated by theism. So, you certainly can't establish burden of proof just by, you know, casting uh, the proposition in question in terms of a negation or a uh, positive claim. These are matters of how the thing is formulated, not, uh, you know, the cosmic state of affairs. Uh, furthermore, I mean, I think that burden of proof is by and large a social matter, or at least it social conventions and uh, consensuses bear on burden of proof. I mean, burden of proof is something that arises in an argument or a dialogue uh, with regard to particular uh, people or in particular social slash epistemic situations. Um, so, for example, you know, if most people believe that God exists, let's say, and I, that seems likely, statistics bear that out, I guess, um, then, you know, it's not crazy to think that the burden of proof rests with the atheist. It, in dialogue with a theist, um, you know, I don't think you can get anywhere with a burden of proof argument. Uh, this, such a thing would be interminable. Each one would be uh, asking the other, um, or uh, asserting that the other has the burden of proof. At any rate, I, I don't see that you get you can really get going with a burden of proof style argument. Now, really, the heart of a lot of these uh, atheist polemics these days is the question of the effect of religion in history. And of course, it's hard to deny that religion has had terrible effects in history. And one, I think, one spur for the recent work in atheism was uh, September 11th and religious terrorism, and also maybe the response to September 11th, um, which you know, I think in Bush's head, perhaps, uh, had, a, had a religious component or uh, was a crusade, as he said early on, on behalf of God. Obviously, there have been monstrous crimes perpetrated on behalf of religion. Um, you know, the Inquisition or the Crusades or, you know, take whatever uh, your favorite example may be. Uh, and obviously, religious people can be uh, intolerant, unreasonable, persecutors when they get the chance, and so censors, and so on. However, I mean, overall, the question of the effect of religion on human history, whether it's positive or negative, is an incredibly difficult and obscure question. 
Um, I mean, to some extent, the idea of religion is one that only arises in the modern era. Uh, and, you know, what we would call the religion of tribal cultures or of, uh, you know, early cultures, maybe the Egyptians or uh, the Greeks, for instance, um, is not like a separate component of the culture. It is the culture, or it's identical with the culture, or it's inextricable from the culture. Um, and, you know, it, uh, and, and trying to assess the effects of, say, Egyptian religion on Egyptian culture is just a, is a confused idea. You don't have that culture without that religion. Uh, and this is, you know, generally true. I mean, furthermore, the effects are imponderable, incalculable. Um, obviously, religion has had good effects. You know, if you like Mahatma Gandhi's reading of the Bhagavad Gita or Martin Luther King's theology or, um, you know, if people have helped lepers or uh, starving, they've often done so for, for religious reasons. And trying to, you know, put these all onto a utilitarian scale and figure out, you know, whether it's been more good than bad, I suggest is extremely difficult uh, to assess. Um, of course, I mean, it might seem obvious that religion has had bad effects. I don't know. Uh, if that seems obvious to you, then more power to you. But I'll say this as well. Even if it has had bad effects, even if it had had only bad effects, that wouldn't show that it's false, um, it seems to me. Now, of course, you might have a pragmatist theory of truth on which the good or bad effects of some claim uh, bear on its truth, or that's what the truth of the claim consists in. But uh, I think that that theory of truth is, uh, for reasons I won't go into, uh, is, is, is completely um, implausible. Um, so, you know, think about this. What are the overall good or bad effects of, let's say, science and technology? Well, great, wonderful effects in medicine, for instance, probably. You know, terrible effects in atomic weaponry. Uh, it's the kind of thing that, you know, assessing in this simplistic way, like it's, it, it, it's been great or it's been uh, bad, is impossible. Um, you know, and I'd say this about, uh, about many things that are uh, conducted on huge historical scales. Um, the isolation of them from their context uh, is impossible, and the assessment of their effects is uh, infinitely difficult. Um, so I don't really think you get a good argument um, on behalf of atheism from either of these uh, strategies, burden of proof arguments or um, arguments from the effects. And um, we'll come back with more. I'm going to do some bit, a bit on intelligent design, for instance, and the argument from design and the problem of evil. So uh, stay tuned.